Hello friends, in today's documentary, we will talk about, the declassified files of the UFO phenomenon. US Army and Aliens. The generous and fulminating realm of aliens could not be missed by the secret services of the great powers of the world. At least, this is what the conspiracy theorists say. That the intelligence services, along with the real forums that lead the shadow world, are the only organizational entities that know the truth about the UFO phenomenon. With all its implications in the past, present and especially, the future of mankind. The question is, if the representatives of intelligent extraterrestrial civilizations wanted to come into contact with Earthlings, who would they turn to? No matter who he is, could he get away with the secret services? During the Cold War, many analysts believe that the secret services were the true leaders of the world states. In addition, in conspiracy theory, any secret service is nothing more than a true state within a state. With its own levers and people in key positions, the respective intelligence service would hold power in any country and under any regime. After all, the true meaning of power, nowadays translates into information. Whoever has as much information as possible about a domain, an organization or a person, has power over the domain, organization or person in question. And when we refer to information, the secret services remain the institutions that are in possession of the largest databases on absolutely any field, databases updated and reviewed daily. As we turn our attention to the rich and varied UFO cases, we see that almost any incident involving aliens has links, in one way or another, with the secret services. From fragments of information leaked over time, in the media and conspiracy theories, it appears that most major intelligence services in the world have a special department. Dedicated 100% to studying, contacting and even maintaining relationships and exchanges of information with non-earthly beings. Dot. Document leaked, leaked, on the internet. The US government asks the CIA for help in investigating a UFO case in April 1976. On the other hand, we must look at the whole UFO phenomenon, with great reservations. That's because either, 1. Aliens and UFOs are 100% SF creations, fables popularized in the tabloid press from the opportunistic pursuit of profit of press trusts, augmented with the theories of gullible, very enthusiastic or paranoid people. 2. At least some of the classic UFO incidents were true, a situation in which, again, we must be wary of the way they appeared in the press. Knowing that the secret service is organized, especially in in the second half of the 20th century. Real media intoxication campaigns introduced undercover agents to key television and newspaper stations. And thus directed the flow of information by virtue of obscure concepts such as security and national security. If we believe the second hypothesis to be true, then almost everything we know about aliens can be nothing but the cosmetic version offered to the public by misinformation experts. Finally, another conspiracy theory does not rule out the possibility that the representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations are in close contact with the CIA, Mossad or MI5, and agree together, according to some criteria known only to them, on how man ordinary is informed, prepared and educated about aliens. U.S. Army and Aliens. Some sources, with questionable credibility and unverifiable credence, have argued over time that CIA structures and U.S. special departments. The Army has a long relationship with three species of extraterrestrial beings that, of all the nations of the world, would have chosen to come into contact only with the Americans. Reptiles, named after their skin, conformers, living beings based on silicon, and Little Greys, also known as Ebens, which are said to originate from the solar system Zeta Reticuli, the most famous and common extraterrestrials, humanoids, small in height, with grey skin, voluminous head and large eyes, similar to those of an insect. An anonymous source, known on the blogs and forums of conspiracy theorists, who recommends himself generally in the US Reserve, Navy, revealed in early February 2008 that in the last 50 years, there have been over 300 confidential meetings between aliens and representatives of the U.S. government. Immediately after his interview, 
which appeared in several American newspapers, the general in question, initiated among the circles of ufologists is Source A, declared that he had received death threats, being at the same time ordered to stop chirping. Research by journalists specializing in the UFO phenomenon confirmed that Source A had indeed been a general among the U.S. Navy. Obviously, no one can verify that. All in all, the reservist was not intimidated by the threats and gave a new interview to UFO investigators Clay and Sean Pickering, in which he provides details about a permanent military cooperation between reptilian aliens and higher forums that oversee governments and services. American Secrets Another source, obviously remaining anonymous, associated with an obscure secret service, Defense Intelligent Agency, informs us that 18 top representatives of the United States, Russia, China and the Vatican traveled on November 12, 2009, on an atoll from the Pacific. There, in a paradisiacal setting, people would have met the aliens of the Abeni species. Agent DIA doesn't know exactly what was discussed there and how the interplanetary meeting ended. The technological success of the URSS he was an alien. In the yard of the Big Brother from the East. Things are not much different. Broadly speaking, the same secrecy towards the UFO phenomenon is observed, surrounded by many mystifications and diversions, in which the Russian agents are aces. The history of the relations between the Russian secret services and the visitors from other plants dates back over 100 years, since the time of the Tsarist secret police, the formidable Orana. Thus, the Kremlin's secret services database with aliens is so rich that files and audio-video recordings would fit in more than 20 train cars, if we are to believe a former KGB cadre. The international press associates Russia and the former Soviet space with only the famous Voronezh incident and several other fugitive appearances in the Moscow sky. Fans of the UFO phenomenon claim, however, that the incidence of appearances and contacts is much higher. The former Soviet Union covered a huge space, the size of a continent. Russia's surface today is not much smaller either. Theoretically, it is somehow expected that on such a vast territory to have their numerous observations, UFO incidents and even meetings between humans and aliens. The technological and military advance that the URSS he took it in front of the USA. Immediately after the Second World War and until the beginning of the 70s of the last century it would have been due to the close cooperation between the KGB and an alien warrior race, according to a conspiracy theory. It seems that the data and technology provided by beings from a galaxy millions of light years from Earth helped the Soviets in the development of state-of-the-art aircraft. Aircraft whose existence the Kremlin will never recognize. Other conspirators come up with an even scarier hypothesis. According to them, the millions of victims of communism on Soviet territory, most of whom were killed in the Siberian gulags and whose remains are unknown, were in fact sacrificed to aliens. Stalin himself would have personally ratified an evil pact with aliens. Proponents of this gloomy hypothesis say that a special secret police department constantly delivers alien human guinea pigs. Obviously, we will most likely never know if these theories were launched in the form of a diversion, are the result of shaping exalted minds, or have at least a drop of truth. The Four Principles Conspiracy theorists claim that modern societies have been built in the form of concentric circles of power, and can be controlled and manipulated from top to bottom. In this equation, the political regime no longer matters. The top secret services have their own reasons when it comes to keeping quiet about the existence of aliens. From the CIA, the FSB, the Mossad, to the profile services in Burundi or Benin, all these superior intelligence structures, which in fact coordinate the world of politics, act largely on the same principles when it comes to keeping the secret of revelations that would produce uncontrolled reactions from the masses. The physicist Stanton Friedman, who in the past held important positions among giants such as Westinghouse and General Electric, has devoted much of his personal research to the relationship between human and alien power structures. In his opinion, the secret services around the world are generally guided by four principles that would help them avoid a true cosmic Watergate.
1. The agents of the special department seek, first of all, to decipher the potential of the extraterrestrial technology and to establish some relations with EI, relationships from which, obviously, the countries they represent have as much to gain. 2. No secret service wants competing or hostile governments to gain information about their own relations with aliens. 3. If a large international public figure, such as the President of the United States or Russia, Queen Elizabeth of Great Britain or the Pope of the Vatican, comes out with a statement acknowledging the existence of the UFO, there is a risk of widespread global anarchy, from a political, economic, social and religious point of view. No one has an interest in announcing the existence of aliens, at least not yet. And anyone trying to do so must be stopped by any means. 4. The fourth great principle concerns the strict control of religious fundamentalists, who, in the matter of UFO, either consider aliens as tools of Satan, or do not recognize the possibility of their existence. The resurgence of religious fundamentalism in the 21st century is one of the most worrying aspects for some intelligence services. Obviously, when this is not in their interest, if you like the documentary, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I wish you all the best.